It's Luke Hursle here with 73 Fitness. Uh, I'm going to talk today about um, core development and kind of core function. Um, so if you think about our core, it's basically if I chop my, my arms and my legs off, everything less, left, should I say, would be my core, uh, my abdominals, my obliques, um, my um, erector spinae muscles, as well as our internal layer, uh, our transverse abdominus, internal obliques, blah, 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 multifitors running down the spine and all that. Um, so I'm going to talk today is about the fact you have two separate layers of your core, your outside layer, which new enough everyone will be familiar with, your obliques, um, your abdominals at the front, uh, and then maybe not so many of you will know, but you also have your, your spinal erectus on the back. These are just an outside layer. This is, this is all kind of, when we talk about bodybuilding and, and you see guys crunching, that's just working that outside layer, side crunch, normal crunches, reverse crunch, whatever. It's um, all working that outside layer. Uh, and that's why you get these bodybuilders with low body fat percentages. They look ripped, they look lean. Um, kind of a model for everyone to look up to, apparently. Uh, but some of them are still suffering with back pain because their internal core layer isn't strong enough to, to kind of hold the, the vertebrae or the back. So I'm going to talk today about that internal layer and some good exercises to help that, which ultimately they'll help you more in a sports performance point of view because that's where I come from. That's my background. I'm all about sports performance. Um, it's nice to have a low body fat percentage and to look pretty ripped, but it's not the be all end all of sports. You look at power lifters, they're built for a function. Yes, they don't have six packs. Yes, they look like big fat guys, but I won't say it to the face because they're huge and they're very, very strong. <laughs> And their core is twice as strong as that of kind of a bodybuilder. Uh, though those of you who know me know I don't really prefer the, the bodybuilding route. I think it's all aesthetics, it's all for looks. Um, they're not some of them can be, but not all are that functional in terms of performance. Um, so today I'm going to talk about the, the core functions, the internal kind of core, your your transverse abdominals, your internal obliques and what we call intra-abdominal pressure. To train that internal layer, you need to train uh, mainly using kind of stabilization techniques, uh, which is why kind of Swiss balls are an amazing uh, way to do that. Um, they help build what, what we like to call um, a good foundation. Build that good foundation of stability, and then you can start putting power on top. If you just train all power, all squats, deadlifts, super heavy stuff, and you never stop to think about training the core in an individual, you become what they call kind of a what, what they call a cannon on a canoe. You've got all this power, but if you fire it, you're going to sink your goddamn canoe because that that foundation that it's built on isn't very strong. And this is how you, you get these power. Well, sorry, bodybuilders um, and other guys who are super strong, powerful guys, but still suffer with back pain and and holding themselves in alignment. Um, so uh, that's my basics on kind of short. Uh, introduction of stabilization of the core. Uh, there is more information out there, there's a lot more that I haven't kind of discussed, but it'll probably take a lot longer video to get through everything. Um, I know one of my um, guys that I look up to, if you go on YouTube and search a guy called Paul Check, he goes into the core in ridiculous detail um, to a point where I'd probably have to put like a 30 minute video on uh, to get it all in. He talks about how the brain is also connected to the core and how um, if you're not eating the right foods, that can actually help you. That can if you don't eat the right food, should I say, it can help deplete your core stability because what your body will do, your intestines will get inflamed and then your, your body will decide to shut off the core and let the, the intestines become inflamed rather than tighten up the core and squeeze in the intestines, which will cause you more problems. So if you go check his YouTube channel out, you get some amazing insights into some more uh, kind of information if you're interested. But for now, I'm just going to show you a good exercise on a Swiss ball, which will help your core stabilization. Um, it's called the jackknife. It's pretty simple. If you can't do it on the Swiss ball to start off with, uh, try it on a TRX or kind of a suspension trainer. You can put your feet in there and it takes away some of the stabilization. It won't be as good for your core function, uh, but it's a good starting point if you have too much trouble with this exercise. The jackknife comes from uh, the Swiss ball. I'm going to go with the Swiss ball about mid shin level. Uh, try and keep that spine nice and flat. I'm going to walk back a bit so you can see me a bit better. That's it. Now you're going to bring uh, the Swiss ball into the, the knees, into the chest, 
and drive back out. Bring your knees as close to the, the chest as you possibly can. Um, all the way kind of stabilizing. So the two things you might see, which you might have seen a little bit on me, is an over-rounding of the thoracic. So you really need to remember to drive them shoulders back uh, the whole time and as well make sure the lumbar isn't in um, too much of a kind of curvature. Good way to check this if you get a stick, uh, anything from kind of studio, uh, kind of barbell to kind of just a wooden stick. Place that on, on someone's back and it should touch on the back of the head, between the shoulder blades and on the tailbone. Um, and then where the lumbar is, you should just be able to get a finger width gap there. Um, and that will ensure that you're in correct alignment.